Here we are again, Tips and Tricks for Tecla Structures, Part 3. Hello, and welcome to C.S. Wilson Draws. I'm C.S. Wilson. I'm back with more tips and tricks, because I know you guys love these. At least, if I'm reading the YouTube analytics correctly, as well as the comments and emails, direct messages, phone calls. Just kidding. No phone calls. Seriously, though, don't call me. Anyway, I've got a few more entries to add to the list of things that might help you as you work with Tecla Structures, because that's what I do here. Doing the research so you don't have to. Basically, just trying to help out. So with that, Let's get started. You may have a project where you're required to show two different dimension formats on your drawings. Let's say you use US Imperial dimensions, but you also need to show metric dimensions as well. To set this up, go to File, Settings, Options, then select Drawing Dimensions. In the Dimensions in Tags box, set up the units, format, and precision to use for your secondary dimension. Then put a check next to the drawing types you want to automatically apply the dimension to. Then click Apply and OK to save the settings. In this example, the secondary dimension will be the metric equivalent of the US Imperial dimension. Here I have a drawing loaded. And now, when I put dimensions on, the secondary metric dimension is now displayed. If you don't want to have the secondary dimensions added automatically, you can uncheck the boxes in the Dimensions and Tags box and manually add this dimension by opening the Dimension Properties, go to the Tags tab, and type Dimension using all caps in the box that corresponds to the location you want the dimension to appear. When dimensioning, if you continue selecting points while the command is active, you'll create a string of dimensions. When you have a dimension string and you select one dimension in that string, you select them all and any modifications to the properties will affect all of them. If you want to single out just one of these dimensions, you can activate the Select Single Dimensions from the toolbar and then manipulate one dimension at a time. Or, an easier way is to hover over the dimension you want, hold the left mouse button, and drag the dimension out of the string. This will free it up from the other dimensions and also create new dimension strings on either side. If there are dimensions there, of course. If you want to add or make dimensions into a string, select the desired dimensions, right mouse click and pick Combine Dimension Lines. You can also create or add to a dimension string by adding dimension points to an existing dimension. Select the dimension, right click and select add dimension point. I like to use the add dimension point command since you can add dimension points by simply selecting a point or you can subtract points by holding the shift and selecting existing points. It's a really efficient way to modify dimensions. When selecting objects in the model or on the drawings, you can control the selecting method by using the Control, Shift, and Alt keys. Holding the Shift key while picking an object adds it to your selection set. The Control key works as a toggle. Holding it and picking an unselected object will add it to your selection set and will remove it if it's already selected. Holding down the Alt key will select all of the parts in the assembly. This is different than the Select Assemblies from the toolbar in that the Alt key selects everything in the assembly individually, while the Select Assemblies from the toolbar selects the whole assembly as one piece. You can also use the combinations Shift-Alt and Control-Alt to add and subtract all of the parts of an assembly from the selection set. The Control, Shift, and Alt keys also work when using a selection window or a crossing window as well. A selection window will appear when you left click in a blank area of the view and drag to the upper right or lower right. This will only select objects that fall completely inside the box. A crossing window appears when you left click in a blank area of the view and drag to the upper left or lower left. This will select any object that is within its boundaries, even if it's only a part of it. To make all selection windows a crossing window type regardless of which direction you go, go to File, Settings, and Enable Crossing Selection. This next one deals with the dialog boxes. I'm sure most of you know about this, but inside all the dialog boxes, you have the ability to include or not include any input when you apply, modify, or OK. This is done by simply toggling the checkbox that's next to the input. 
clicking on the Enable Disable button at the bottom of the dialog will toggle every one of the checkboxes in the entire dialog. And I mean the entire dialog. All of the main tabs and the tabs inside of those, plus all of the sub dialogs, as well as all of the sub sub dialogs in those, and so on and so on and so on. Think of it as an on off switch with nuclear capabilities. With nuclear capabilities. Nuclear capabilities. If you want to switch that so that every time a dialog box is opened, all of the checkboxes are off or disabled, then set the advanced option, Excess Dialog Enable State, to false. By contrast, obviously, setting it to true will enable them all. You'll notice that this setting is not found in the advanced options dialog, so it'll have to be set in an INI file, like user INI or options.ini. I talked a little bit about those files in a different context in this video. This next tip involves adding superscript to your drawing text. If you're not familiar, superscript is either text or a symbol that's written just above the normal line of text and is usually a little bit smaller. In Tecla structures, this can be added to text, part marks, dimensions, associative notes, and basically any text type objects on the drawing. So to get started, head over to the advanced options, search for super in all categories, and you'll be presented with two settings excess superscript height factor, and excess superscript used in drawing texts. The superscript used in drawing text is fairly straightforward. If you want to use superscript, set it to true. If you don't, set it to false. The height factor is a percentage of the text height that you're adding the superscript to. For example, if you have the superscript height factor set to 0.7, and the text height you're adding the superscript to is 0.125, then the superscript size will be 70% of that, or 0.0875. Now that all that's set up, let's add some superscript. To do this, simply add a caret, shift 6 on most keyboards, in front of and behind the text you want to be superscript. This can be a single character, or entire words and sentences, or even a symbol. Speaking of symbols, the symbols I'm referring to are the ASCII symbols that you can add directly into text. This tip doesn't just apply to Tecla structures, but really any Windows-based program. You access these by holding down the Alt key and then typing in a number on the numeric keypad. This doesn't work with the regular number keys along the top of the keyboard. It has to be from the numeric keypad on the right side. For example, if I want to add the diameter symbol to my text, I hold down the ALT key and type 0216 on the keypad, and when I release the ALT key, the diameter symbol appears. Or at least it's something that resembles the diameter symbol. I don't know what it actually is, but I use it to denote round things. ALT plus 0176 is the degree symbol, and ALT plus 0177 gives you the plus minus symbol, which is especially handy for dimensions. Those are the three I use most often and are found in most fonts, but anything above 127 can vary, so I encourage you to explore your upper ASCII codes and see what's available. And with that, we've reached the conclusion of the third installment in the Tips and Tricks series. I hope you found it informative, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave comments and questions in the comment section below this video. Check out the rest of my channel for more videos just like this. Please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.